Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 64. Uh, the title of the discourse is The Longer Discourse with Malunya. Right? So, we had a discourse, uh, a Buddha, Buddha's discussion with Malunya in MN63. Right? And this is a longer discourse uh, with Malunya. And uh, let us see what Buddha says on this discourse. So, basically here Buddha says, Mendicants, do you remember the five lower fetters? Fetters is what? Chains, right? What chains? Chains that bind us to the samsara. So, uh, so Buddha said, Mendicants, do you remember the five lower fetters that I taught? And when he said this, Venerable Ma Malunya, so when Malunya uh, was, became a, a part of Buddha's Sangha, and uh, Malunya said, Yes, sir, I remember them. So Buddha said, How do you remember them? That means, in what way do you remember? So he said, I remember the lower fetters taught by the Buddha as follows. Identity view, doubt, misapprehension of precepts and observances, sensual desire and ill will. That's how I remember the five lower fetters taught by the Buddha. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read it at your end also. Now, this is just a learning summary that I am sharing here from my little understanding. right? So here Buddha says, in a slightly, you know, uh, kind of a scolding tone. Who on earth do you remember being taught the five lower fetters in that way? Wouldn't the wanderers of other religions fault you for using the simile of the, for using the simile of the infant? Fault you using the simile of the infant? For a little baby doesn't even have a concept of identity. So how could identity view possibly arise in them? Yet the underlying tendency to the identity view still lies in them, lies in them. And similarly for the other things. So basically what happened, it's unclear why Buddha uh, used this kind of a tone. Because what response of Malunya was right, that these are the five uh, 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 lower factors. But the commentary around this was that Malunya was saying that, that these lower factors were only present when in a person when he's when when it is active in them so for example ill will only when it is active it is present but buddha's point was that even in an infant an infant you cannot see like a you know something like a identity view right and a small infant will not have identity view still somewhere there it is there in him so it is wrong to say that the identity view is only the, the lower fetters is only present when it is active it is present even when it is not active, when it is dormant. So that is why maybe Buddha was was kind of, you know, scolded in a scolding tone, he said. Because otherwise the answer what um, Malunya gave was right. Then Venerable Ananda, Ananda was a senior disciple of the Buddha, he came in between and he said that now is the time blessed one, now is the time holy one, may the Buddha teach the five lower fetters. That means please teach us the five lower fetters. So this is an important discourse which allows us, which helps us to understand what are the five. See, these fetters we have to overcome if we have to attain nirvana, right? So Buddha said there are in all some 10 fetters or maybe more. I am not very clear on that. But at least these five are the lower fetters which we have to eliminate, right? So Buddha said, well, well then, Ananda, listen and apply your mind well. I will speak, right? So Buddha said, a unlearned person who has not seen the noble ones, who is neither skilled nor trained in the teaching of the noble ones, their heart is overcome and mired in identity view and they don't truly understand the escape from the identity view. That identity view is reinforced in them, not eliminated. It is a lower factor. That means they are overcome with the identity view. They have the unlearned people, they have not met the uh, realized ones, they have not undergone the teaching. So their identity view is, uh, you know, becomes strong. It's They are overcome with the identity view. And that identity view is reinforced in them, not eliminated. Right? Similar with doubt, with misapprehension of precepts, with sensual desire, with ill will. Right? So it is reinforced in them. So these are all lower fetters. They keep, they keep they keep a person chained in samsara. Right? 
But then Buddha says a learning, learned noble disciple who has seen the noble ones, who are skilled and trained in the teaching, they have seen the true persons and skilled and trained in the teaching of the true persons. Their heart is not overcome and mired in identity view and they truly understand the escape from identity view that has arisen. That identity view along with any underlying tendency to it is given up in them. Similarly for doubt, misapprehension, sensual desires, ill will. Now Buddha says a very very important thing is that there is a path and a practice for giving up the five lower fetters. Then even more important line that comes. It's not possible to know or see or give up the five lower fetters without relying on that path and that practice. Then Buddha gives. So, so basically Buddha is saying that there is a path for giving up these five lower fetters. And without that particular path or practice, you cannot give up, you cannot even know and give up these five lower fetters. Now what are the five, what are the, what is the basic thing? Now Buddha is giving an example of heartwood. It's not possible to cut out the heartwood without having to cut down, cut through the bark and softwood. In the same way, there is a path and practice for giving up the five lower fetters. It's not possible to know or see or give up the five lower fetters without relying on that practice. Then Buddha is giving another, then Buddha is talking about in this, uh, in this para, Buddha is talking about the qualities of the person who comes on the path, right? So that he can actually walk that path. So Buddha is giving the analogy of a river Ganges which is full to the brim and a, so, so full for the, to the brim that the crow could drink from it. And then came, comes across a feeble person who thinks, by swimming with my arms, I will safely cross over to the far shore. But they are not able to do so. In the same way, when, a dham, when Dhamma is being taught for the cessation of the identity view, someone whose mind isn't secure, confident, settled and decided should be regarded as being that feeble person. On the contrary, when the Dhamma is taught, someone whose mind is secure, confident, settled should be regarded as like that of a strong person. So, the, our mind, the quality of the mind of the mendicant is also important whether he is able to decode the teaching and he is able to follow the teaching well. Right? So that is Buddha was bringing out. So we have to keep our mind strong and clear and we have to keep our faith in the realized one. Right? That the path that has been given, not blind faith, but faith in the teachings in the realized one, that the teachings we have to follow the teachings and not do too much of spiritual shopping here and there. Otherwise we will get distracted and not kind of lose ourselves in metaphysical questions. Which was like the the you know earlier discourse uh, that we discussed with Malunya Buddha said that don't unnecessary do spiritual shopping and un metaphysical questions. MN sixty three. You can check MN sixty three also on that particular thing. And then Buddha says, what Ananda is the path and practice for giving up the five lower fetters? It's when a mendicant, due to seclusion from attachments, giving up unskillful qualities and complete settling of physical discomfort, quite secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unskillful qualities, enters and remains in the first absorption, which has rapture and bliss born out of seclusion while placing the mind and keeping it connected. They contemplate the phenomena included in the form, feelings, perceptions, choices, all the five wings. They contemplate the phenomena in the five aggregates as impermanent, as suffering, as diseased, as a boil, as a dart, as a misery, as an affection, affliction, as alien, as falling apart, as empty, as non-self. They turn their mind away from those things and apply it to the deathless element. This is peaceful, this is sublime. That is the stilling of all activities, letting go of all attachments, ending of craving, feeding away, cessation, extinguishment. Abiding in that, they attain the ending of defilements. If they don't attain the ending of defilements, with the ending of the five lower fetters, they are reborn spontaneously because of their passion and love for meditation. And they are extinguished, they are not liable to return from that world. This is the path and practice for giving up the five lower fetters. Then Buddha talks about second, third, fourth absorption. Again, if they don't attain that, they are reborn spontaneously and they are not liable to attain from, you know, return from that world. Then Buddha talks about going beyond perceptions of form with again perceptions of impingement, 
reaching the dimension of infinite space, then infinite dimension of infinite consciousness, dimension of nothingness. These three dimensions through the practice, deep practice of meditation. Then someone asked that Buddha, that if this path and practice for giving up the five lower fetters, how come some mendicants have are released in heart while others are released by wisdom? Right? So some are released by heart. So meaning of this can be is that some are released through the immersion, through concentration. And some are released by wisdom. Wisdom is some are released through knowledge, insight. So Buddha said in that case, I say it is the diversity of their faculties. That means every mendicant is different. So depending on their faculties, they attain the extinguishment accordingly. Some attain by way of immersion, some attain by way of insight. So now, I can only share whatever little I could understand uh, from this, is that definitely the five lower fetters, we got you know clarity on what are the five lower fetters are and what is the path. The path is going in meditative, meditative concentration and the four jhanas. So friends, as of now, I am not very, you know, in-depth. I don't have in-depth clarity on the four jhanas because I do not practice that way. I practice the vipassana way. And it's like said that vipassana, ultimately, the practice of vipassana also leads to the insight which comes as part of the practicing of the jhanas. Right? So I am not very clear at this point on this exact path of the jhanas and reaching the various dimensions. But definitely, I will post a video, a detailed video on that. Right? But for now, what I will say is that our practice of meditation, where we identify everything, we keep, we contemplate, we see whatever is momentary concentration of whatever is arising right now, and which gives us an insight of uh, the impermanent nature of things, the suffering nature of things, the non-self nature of things. And this insight is very, very precious. This insight has the ability to free us from everything, to clear all our defilements. So we have to just now focus as lay people, just focus on the on the precepts, following the precepts, living the life in a right way, not lying, no, not stealing, not killing, no sexual misconduct, no drinking, doing our daily meditation, reading some dhamma every day, right? So over time, this leads to clearings of the five fetters, right? So this is it in this video. If there is anything that you would like to add, you would like to uh, uh, comment, do please do that. Do please read the discourse at your end. You will get your own insights. And thank you so much for, for watching. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.